Hey everybody, it's a gorgeous day here in Georgia at the shop. I'm gonna be working on the Hummer today. Um, the really nice K5 I've got is still gone, getting some stuff redone to it, uh, just fixing a lot of the Kenwood Rod Shop stuff. When it comes back, I'm gonna be working on the wiring. The parts K5, I think has become the Restorer K5. It's in really good shape. The floors aren't that bad, but wouldn't you know it, I put it out in the universe, I wanted a K5, and not only did one show up, but let me show you what else happened. All right, guys, so look behind me. That's the uh, K5 I'm gonna restore, and that is a K5 that uh, kind of fell in my lap. So this one was half the price of this one, and I got this one really cheap, so I ended up getting two K5 Blazers. So now I've got, that's gonna be the parts truck. This is gonna be slightly restored, and then I've got the one that's uh, gone that'll be my show truck, um, but I'll drive it because you don't build cars to just sit around. So let me show you a little bit here. This K5, um, I've taken the grill off because it's got the passenger side damage. It actually hit a, um, a fire truck, a parked fire truck. So it's got a lot of damage on it. Now this K5, this is gonna be my parts truck. The reason it's a parts truck, it's physically on the outside, it's got a lot of really good sheet metal, good grill. The bumper's pretty good. So I'm gonna move a lot of the parts from this to this. The entire passenger side of this truck will be moved over to this truck. This truck has the 350 fuel injected. They're both black 87s. This one has the 305. Um, the, three, the turbo, or I'm sorry, the 700R4 in this truck Someone replaced it with a turbo 350 and I didn't even realize it when I bought it But um, the reverse doesn't work. So this truck will drive forwards. It will not drive backwards. The 350 runs great I did have to rewire the fuel pump because I realized the fuel pump wasn't pumping fuel correctly uh, Now it runs great. Just it'll only run forward. There is no interior in this truck It's already been removed the guy who I bought it from wherever there was rust he would put this metal tape and then he would literally puddle silicone, clear silicone, on top of it, I guess as a water preventative. I don't know, but the back floors are pretty good. The quarter's really good, which is what I needed. Um, the back window doesn't go down, hence the C-clamps. Uh, interior's horrible, but it has a lot of trim pieces that I need for the other truck. So, um, yeah, that's a... That's a pretty good piece there. Um, so yeah, that's the plan on the K5s for right now. Now let me show you what I've done to the Humvee because we're gonna be working on the Humvee a little bit today as well. So as you can see, I have removed the blown up Turbo 400 transfer case. The whole drivetrain's out of it. Both, both um, drive shafts are out of it. And I've even gone as far as I have gone ahead and removed the Sniper EFI. I have removed the intake manifold. I've got the new intake manifold already um, ready to go. The Holly EFI system should be here, I'd say in the next week or so. I've got to build shifters for the, uh, I got the winter shifter, which this is the box for it. I got that is the Atlas shifter bracket. There's a lot to do here. Um, I've pulled out a ton of wiring and you can see it's just an absolute mess right now. But I'll get all this cleaned up. Today, the goal is to get the battery out from the back seat. And I have bought a civilian front mount battery kit, which puts dual batteries right here in the front. And I'm gonna move that battery and all the wiring from back there and put it up here. Uh, if I have time, I'm gonna work on the rear quarter for the K5 and see if I can't get that off and see how bad it is underneath. But we got a lot of work to do today, so I'm excited. It's nice to be able to get back in the shop. I know it's been a while since the last video, but uh, I'm ready to get this Humvee back up and running. I just need that Holly EFI system, and I'm gonna rewire everything while I got it apart. Um, it's gonna be awesome, can't wait. All right, so first things first, I've disconnected all of the wiring from the battery. I've kind of separated it, power and grounds, and um, now I am ready to pull the battery out, but the battery's in this really, really good battery um, hold down. So I've got to unbolt the top, unbolt it from the body, take all this out, it'll give me my storage back, which will be very nice under here. 
and um, we'll go from there. All right, so it is out. Let me show you a little bit of what we're dealing with here. So this is the battery tray. I've got uh, six bolts that go through the body. I'm gonna unbolt this, remove it, and then I can start getting the wires and moving the wires towards the front. All right, got the old extension, the man's extension. Now does that have to be flexible. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, uh. I don't know if I can reach those. Oh, come on, wire. Give me a break. Yes. All right. Please don't fall into the oil bucket. I hope that's not what just happened. Ta-da! So this is under here. And I will save this for a project down the road. It's been great though. It's worked really well. Da -da -da -da. I don't know what this R, is that like rough stuff or something? Can you see that R? I forgot where I got it, online somewhere. It's an Optima specific battery mount. And believe it or not, Optima batteries are not my favorite. They have died on me too many times recently. I think they used to be really good, but now I use a, a DECA, D-E-K-A, -E called the DECA Intimidator. And it has actually been a really good battery. For me at least. There we go, good. And now we've got this wiring harness that has to go back out behind the gas tank. And um, it's gonna take me a little while to undo all the tape um, and disconnect and reconnect and repin and so forth and so on. Some of it will just need to be cut, but whatever. All right, so I have got all the wires undone. I've taken out all of the relays undone the relays completely i'll rewire these um taking out all the fuses i'll rewire the fuses once i relocate everything um i was cleaning out down here and found shell casings of course they're pretty predominant uh in the old humvee um but yeah so i gotta vacuum it out this is a blank most of them when you find them in here they're just blanks for practice training um all right, so I'm gonna pull these through the body, get them out of there, vacuum this, clean it up, close it, and move everything towards the front. So there we go. The old battery box out of the back seat. I still have the 24 volt batteries on the front, but the rear battery's been removed. It is at my feet. And so now, let me show you. The new battery setup, which I have in the truck I'm about to go get, goes right here it mounts to this bolt and plus another one um i'm gonna have to remove this splash guard which isn't a big deal i'm probably or i know i'm gonna have to cut this splash guard somewhere to make it mount up to this uh frame post right here so i'm gonna go get the battery mount we'll put it up there and see what it looks like all right so i got the big box let's see what we got Humvee dual battery tray. Nice. Very good. So, battery here, battery here. Let's test something out.
There you go. That'll be nice. All right, next is this, which get my old trusty pocket knife out. parts from AM General. Oh, I'm gonna have to modify that, I'm afraid. Maybe. Well, am I? No, I'm good. Well, I'll have to notch it for those posts, but that'll hold that in. This side, I think is gonna be my relay area. So I'm gonna have all my relays and stuff right here. Fuses, easy to get to. This, is the factory appropriate J hook to go up underneath and hold this. That'll be good, and then I mount it down. And then this is the last piece of the puzzle. Let's see how hard this is to get out here. This is our upper splash guard, is what this is. So this mounts like so. And it keeps the Hummer from throwing a bunch of garbage up onto the, uh, the battery. So we'll see. With the two inch body lift, you know, I'll still have a pretty good gap, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's go ahead and start mocking it up on the truck. Here you go. Got the brace removed, or not brace, I've got the uh, support removed. Hell, it ain't even support, what am I talking about? I got that thing removed. Um, let me get the battery, Ugh, battery tray up here. We've got two nuts welded to the back of there. And we have a nut, weld nut there, weld nut there. So this sits, I'm guessing, more centered into that, which is going to make it super fun to cut. I don't know how high it goes. See, that's the problem, is I don't know where, because the holes that are in here are not meant for this. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. Um, and those are at an angle and this has to be straight. This, this definitely has to be supported by something. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. And it's only, can you believe it? It's only these two holes right here hold the entire battery tray. There's some down here on the bottom, but I don't think they line up to mount on anything. Maybe they do. Let me take this off. Take it up at least. So I guess the smartest thing to do would be to draw a straight line over here and then I can line it up on that straight line. There I will. That bottom hole might actually fit. So I'm thinking way up here, like pretty much as high as I can get it and uh, get it away from all the suspension components and the tires and whatnot. So I'm gonna have to do some of that fancy math to figure out what all we got going on here. Yep. And I guess a nut cert maybe is heavy enough. I can also drill another hole down here and put another one. This will be very interesting. Will nut certs hold a battery while it's, you know, beating around? I could also drill, you know, four or five holes back here and go into this 
I don't know. I'm going to figure that out. I don't, I like to overdo things and it's hard to overdo this because that is thick, but it's not super thick. It's definitely not thick enough to put, um, like a nut on the back of it or anything or a, uh, to, to tap it, you know, to hold this weight. So we shall see. Let me play around and we'll get back to it. All right. So I have drawn a straight line. I don't know if you can see it or not. That is level right here. Now I'm going to take this and put it on there, draw the holes and then screw it up and have to redo it. This will be hard to redo being that it's part of the frame and all. Um, this, I'm gonna mark how far I can go because there's a lot of welding and, I mean, uh, yeah, weld from the hook that's right there on the front, so we'll see. Let's try one-handed. So I'm gonna say it kind of settled itself right there. feel good about that. It's far enough away from the air box. Let's see what we're gonna... Actually, I can take the level. Sorry if you can't see this. Sorry, not sorry. Of course, it doesn't match that line at all, which means the floor of this is different. So I'm glad I did that. Ta-da! Ah, so, let me move this. I can tell you right now that it needs to move back towards the cab more. See if I can get you a closer up shot. So, this one is just a little too close to that weld. Um, and I would be kind of afraid that uh, it would contact the outside of the tube. So I'm gonna move it back just a little bit. I mean, just a little bit to get me where I'm nowhere near this weld. And then what I'll do is I'll drill and I will use um, uh, rib nuts. And then further down, because I've got a lot more room behind, I'm actually gonna bolt it all the way through in two locations. And then I'll come down here in the bottom and do another one or two rib nuts. And I could even, well, not, well, yeah, with it on, I could probably get a nut back here. I just don't know if I could get a wrench up in there to tighten it. So it will be secure. It just won't be quite factory. So I'm going to get my calipers and start playing with these numbers to get, excuse me, to get it moved back a little bit. And we'll go from there. So after some calipering and some mathematics, I found out that the outside line should be the outside of the hole. The inside line should be the center of the hole. So now I can put the brace back up there, level it out, and know kind of where the middle of the hole should be uh, forward and backward and get a much better forwards and backwards measurement. So I'm going to do that now. I don't know if I can put you somewhere where you'll be able to see. Let's try that. A little crooked today. Not a problem. Ooh. All right. Totally worth it when it's done. All right, so I should have marked the middle of the holes. I know that. All right, so we're gonna be kind of, uh, that's, oh. That's horrible. It's hard to hold it. I was shaking like crazy. Look at these lines. Uh, they're not circles. So back to the drawing board, I'm afraid. Let's try it one more time. Too wiggly, too shaky. That one's good, I think. Just gotta get it level. That is not good, not good at all. I mean, it's better, but it's not great. 
I'm gonna clean it up, do it again. I want it done right. I have what I feel like are the dots that I'm going to punch and drill. It's level via the dots, but now I have to get this thing up here and hopefully not ruin the dots and make sure that it is level on there before I drill. All right. This is beef right here, man. All right, so that in the middle, that one in the middle. So that one comes up. So I think really, if it's, oh, if it's lined up on there, which would be like that. Yeah, it's just uh, dead center. It's actually built to be offset of the bracket slant. So even though the bracket slants this way, you flat line that and it lines up and then the pan lines up on that. So if it's a little off, it won't matter. But it better not be a little off. So let me go get a punch, punch these holes real quick and uh, then I'll start drilling them out. All right, so that, whoo, can we, can we focus camera? Are we, are we having trouble? I don't know what's going on here. That's frustrating. So this is a 3 8 rib nut. This is going to be drilled, pressed in, but I do not have the die, sorry, I don't have the die to tighten this onto the metal. So I'm gonna have to wait to order the die from Amazon. So let me go ahead and drill the holes um, based on the caliper reading of right here. And uh, we'll just have to wait until the part comes in so I can uh, put these in. So I have pre-drilled two pilot holes just so I know where the holes are supposed to be. I've already ordered the die off Amazon Prime. It'll be here on Friday. I've gone ahead and wire wheeled the area when primered it. I saw some a uh, little bit of rust coming through. I've got to figure out why I'm dripping coolant. Uh, it's on the bottom of the reservoir. So I'm hoping it's this hose maybe. Um, this is riveted down and I kind of see some marks like it's leaking right there. So I may be in the market for a new overflow tank, which would suck because I know they're really expensive. For now, since I can't finish the battery tray, I'm going to go ahead and pull the wiring. Um, I don't need a lot of the wires that are run behind the dash anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, undo those, take those out so I can get ready to um, hook up the new Dominator, Holly Dominator EFI when it gets here. Oh yeah, there's my shifter. I was looking for that. Winter shifter, but I got to fit it in that little hole right there. Luckily, I'm good at that. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and undo the wiring. Nothing exciting. The next video, hopefully, I'll be able to finish the battery mount and I might have the Holly stuff by then. So we'll start installing everything. Oh, for those of you that waited till the end of the video, Look at all the crap I've got in here. This thing just won't focus. Check this out. Ultra 4, 4L80. So that is an all billet. Uh, doesn't have the billet case, but all billet internals. 4L80, and it is amazing. So now that I've got the transmission, I've got the Atlas transfer case right here. I can go ahead once I get the electronics and start installing everything back into this beast and waking her up again now that all of this antiquated technology is out of the way and it will be a monster. And this is a cool little fact. I'll be able to run it in two wheel drive and uh, do burnouts. Um, so yeah, I'm super pumped about it. But until the next video, make sure you subscribe, like the video. I appreciate you watching. I know today wasn't super exciting, but a lot of times the build process isn't. But once it gets done, we are going to have a lot of fun.